question is about matrices and um, inverses. Right, the first thing is it gives us a matrix and it says that show A is non-singular. Now, you should know that A is non-singular if its determinant is not equal to zero. So let's go ahead and work out its determinant. The determinant of A is AD subtract BC, which in this case is zero multiplied by three subtract one multiplied by two, and it's negative two. This is not equal to zero, therefore uh, A is non-singular. Now what is being singular all about? Um, A is non-singular, that tells us also that therefore A has an inverse. So A to the minus one exists. That's what we know given A is, is non-singular. So there are two marks. All we have to do is work out the determinant, say it's not equal to zero, and therefore A is non-singular. But the key thing we know about this is its determinant is negative two, and it also means that A to the minus one, its inverse, actually exists. It has an inverse. So we're going to use that in part B. So we're going to rub that out for part A. And part B, find B such that B a squared is equal to A. Now there are, there are different ways of doing this, but the easiest way is just to think from part A, you know A inverse exists. So B A squared, that actually means B A A, right? Is equal to A. Now, if you multiply both sides in f uh, before by A to the minus 1, so what I'm saying by this is, imagine you multiply that by A to the minus 1, and that by a to the minus 1. You can do that to both sides of a matrix equation as long as a minus 1 exists. There's no problem. Well, you know a multiplied by a minus 1 is the identity, right? So you know that this would be ba multiplied by the identity is equal to the identity, and ba multiplied by the identity is ba. So ba would be the identity. Now, the next thing you know is if you multiply both sides of this by a to the minus 1, right? a multiplied by a to the minus 1 is going to be the identity. And i multiplied by a to the minus 1 is going to be a to the minus 1. So you would get b is a to the minus 1. So this matrix b is actually the inverse matrix. How do we find the inverse matrix? Well, it's 1 over the determinant. 1 over negative 2, and then you swap these, so it'd be 3, 0, and negative 1, negative 2. And it's as simple as that. Now, I'm just going to quickly show you another way. Uh, I wouldn't recommend this way, personally, but it's a way that students tend to fall into the trap of. I would think, why is it asking you A is singular, A is invertible, so I'm going to apply inverses to both sides, etc. However, let's just do it the other way. They say, let your matrix B be A, B, C, D. They say, work out A squared. If you work out A squared, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, multiplied by 0, 1, 2, 3, you get yourself um, 2, 3, 6, um, 11. So they take B, this A, B, C, D, they multiply it by 2, 3, 6, 11, and they try and solve the equation where it equals 0, 1, 2, 3. They get themselves four simultaneous equations. If you multiply this out, you get 2A plus 6B is equal to 0. You get yourself 3A plus uh, 11B is equal to 1. You get yourself 2C plus 6D is equal to 2, and you get yourself 3c plus 11d is equal to 3, right? And they just solve simultaneous equations there. These two, you've got two equations and two unknowns. You can solve them for a and b quite easily. And these two, you've got two equations and two unknowns. You can solve them for c and d very easily. And from this, you would actually get uh, the exact same answers as we got before. Okay, so that's another way of doing it, but I would recommend the first way. It's far more elegant and neater and fits in perfectly with the question.